Hi there, thanks for watching. Um, I hope you're enjoying the conference. My name is Alexander Overtom. I'm head of business development at the Things Industries. And today I'm going to share with you our latest digital twin as a service uh, proposition. And probably you know that uh, our core product is the LoRaWAN network server, but the network server is always just a part of a larger end-to-end -end, uh, um, IoT solution. And we um, want all to get a well-orchestrated end-to-end solution. And in order to get there, we need to manage the dependencies uh, on the hardware, on the cloud platform, but also on the physical part of the network, uh, being the, uh, the being the radio network, being the gateways and the devices. And with that comes one of the major pains in um, maintaining uh, uh, like uh, a LoRaWAN network, which is uh, about the physical infrastructure. Because managing physical infrastructure is painful. Um, hardware is never easy and it tends to fail on us and that's the pain that we're trying to alleviate with the digital service digital twin as a service and um, you may know because you have been there uh, but the installation of and maintenance of physical equipment can be a straight-on nightmare we've had a few examples in the past which you can see here is um, at the port of Amsterdam where we are trying to install a smart parking sensor uh, there are a bunch of people involved, uh, six uh, including me taking the picture and um, there is so much alignment required to get that um, that parking sensor into the ground that this becomes very inefficient uh, and um, the delivery time is also increasing. So it's inefficient. Uh, here you see a um, shipped pre-provisioned gateway where the wiring was done wrong, uh, the copper wires were exposed uh, because too much of the of the of the cover was stripped off, uh, resulting in a short circuit that eventually almost set the gateway on fire. And uh, what this is showcasing is that there's often mistakes done in the installation uh, because it's done by people without the right competence. Another thing that we see. Uh, regularly is that um, maintenance needs to be done after deployment uh, because you can always have unforeseen circumstances. You can always have a security uh, vulnerability that needs to be patched with a firmware upgrade but you don't have remote access. So what's going to happen then, right? Um, either you need to remotely swap out the devices or, as you can see in this picture, this also happens, uh, have a field service uh, to drive by your locations to do a remote upgrade via BLE or Wi-Fi. Uh, and this adds a huge cost to your, uh, to your operational uh, expenditures for maintaining the network. Also, what we see often is overpromises with regards to battery lifetime. Um, and um, what that needs to happen then is that uh, a battery needs to be swapped or uh, an entire device needs to be swapped even before uh, it, um, uh, it, it was expected to need a, a swap. And these problems, they result in, in a prohibitive uh, total cost of ownership because you have to deal with returns or repairs um, but also um, think about the opportunity cost. Uh, most of the LoRaWAN solution providers are not installation companies and they could do something better with their time rather than uh, having to uh, worry about, uh, about the physical uh, installation and the maintenance. And also um, if you're doing these installations think about the inefficiencies because a proper installation at scale requires a systemic approach but it also requires a steep le learning curve uh, i mean of course you're you know you'll do 10 devices uh, inefficiently because that doesn't matter but imagine you have to do a thousand or more uh, and and you'll likely give up so what digital twin as a service entails is to give um, the um, uh, LoRaWAN solution providers the opportunity to focus on their core business, on what they're good at, uh, rather than having to worry about these physical deployments. Because the last mile of IoT is a specialty and um, we uh, want to make that um, make that more accessible with a new service. And although you know you will never be 
able to get a service level agreement on the uh, delivery of a data packet to your uh, application server at least you can have a service level agreement on the availability of the equipment itself uh, which includes timely replacements uh, it, it can include the return processes uh, a support desk uh, that you can call um, and uh, um, combining these services are getting us closer to a uh, IoT as device as a service proposition and device as a service has been around for quite some time uh, traditionally it was around uh, printers desktops uh, and Wi-Fi access points but now with IoT uh, it can also be extended to uh, low power wide area networks um, and create that into a managed service so one service, one service provider uh, that takes charge of the equipment's uh, full life cycle. They do the procurement, they do the configuration, they take care of logistics, and they also perform maintenance and even decommission the hardware at the end of its life. And we see that as a missing link in successful LoRaWAN deployments. So what we've uh, decided to do is to offer, uh, together with a partner uh, who does uh, global IT field services, uh, offer this service to our customers uh, so that we can also provide a service level agreement on the availability and the proper functioning of your installed base um, so that you don't have to worry about that. And the idea is uh, one contract, one point of contact, and lower cost than when you would do it yourself. So that doesn't just uh, include the procurement, uh, but it includes the total life cycle costs, uh, which is also the firmware updates, the security patches, and the decommissioning at the end. So what does it encompass? The lower one device as a service um, can be delivered in EU and US, uh, there's going to be an SLA on the availability of the equipment itself. Um, it will include someone going up to a site for installation or someone going up to a site for battery swaps um, in case of a dead battery or faulty uh, equipment swaps. Uh, it takes care of the logistics. Uh, that includes inventory management. It also includes first line support when you see a red LED blinking for example and um, it includes also the of course the uh, LoRaWAN network server uh, and optionally uh, a, a backhaul um, and the beauty of it is that it's a um, OPEX model which means that you do not need to invest into the hardware yourself because that's done by this service uh, and it's um, calculated as a lease fee that you would pay on a uh, monthly basis and then um, with the upcoming e-waste um, regulations, also already think about this, uh, we can take charge of the decommissioning of a device at the end of its life cycle, rather than uh, you uh, discarding the electronics uh, in the normal bin. So a few requirements, um, EU and US, as I mentioned, uh, it's a wholesale deal. So the service uh, applies to 100 sites plus, and uh, maybe you ask, what is a site? Uh, it could be anything really, a supermarket, a restaurant, it could be a warehouse, um, anything that's relatively easy to access. Uh, we also set a number of requirements to the devices, for example, they need to be LoRa Alliance certified, but they also need to be compliancy tested. So we have a number of requirements that a device uh, and a LoRa and a gateway need to uh, need to meet and they're for example around the implementation of ADR when they're stationary uh, but it's also around how do they um, perform in relation to their uh, power consumption and uh, we want to make sure that indeed the promised battery lifetime can be achieved uh, when we deploy these these devices on your behalf in the in the field um, it's about re relatively easy to access sites, uh, indoor or accessible outdoor placements and um, the service is also uh, applicable to companies that already have their own uh, IT field service operation. To give you an idea about the cost, um, these tend to be longer term contracts, um, <coughs> so three years or five years and as an example uh, for five years 
uh, and a full service contract, uh, including one gateway and six devices, you would pay uh, around 40 uh, to 45 euros per site per month. So now um, we were talking about the uh, IoT device as a service. Uh, let's look at the digital twin as a service because that means a step extra. Uh, so we don't want to just virtualize the data of one sensor or a collection of uh, IoT devices, but we also want to um, augment that data with production and operating processes, but also, also contextual metadata. And uh, although that service may not be there yet for LoRaWAN, let me uh, talk you through a few things that we are working on. Um, one of the things, uh, as I said, we need to uh, add extra layers of data. Uh, so uh, in that way, a digital twin can help a company to make even smarter decisions. Um, imagine, for example, the connection of a building information system to uh, an HR planning tool. Uh, and the HR planning tool can provide input around um, new hires, resignations, or longer term staff planning. So that if you combine those uh, sources of data, eventually you can feed into the uh, property lease planning uh, to make sure that the allocation um, of office square meters is optimized over time. And Although you know this may seem like a, a, a bit out of scope for what we're discussing today, the bottom line is that we need a common language uh, to feed into the digital twin. Uh, because if we have a common language, it will become much easier to model and to integrate different sources of data. And let's, for example, take uh, Azure IoT as an example. Um, uh, the language used uh, in IoT Hub uh, is called Digital Twin as a, a Digital Twin Definitions Language or DTDL, and that's a format for sensor data that uh, feeds into this Digital Twin. And that means that for a Digital Twin service, um, the application data format may be presented with an extra semantic layer, uh, in this case called uh, JSON LD for linked data. Um, to support the data ontologies that are defined in Azure. And having this will make building digital twins native to your cloud uh, platform of choice. And we are going to uh, also integrate with that language. And as a final step, um, of course, you need to understand the health of your device population. You don't just want to act on application layer data, but also on uh, the metadata uh, that tells you something about the health of your device fleet. Uh, you want to you know, act on events that, that, that matter, like signal reliability, uh, battery status, etc. And that's why we are building a device diagnostics service. Um, and we have the building blocks there already, like the device repository, like the event server. Um, and the idea is that device events are delivered um, by the uh, event server to the new analytics service. And that will add a discrete or machine learning uh, based analysis. And <clears throat> the outcomes of uh, these analysis are then used to enrich the device profiles that are stored in the device repository. And the device repository in this way becomes a, um, a database of device performance benchmarks that are purely based off of empirical data rather than a, of a vendor produced data sheet. And the idea of this is that you can perform preventive maintenance or that we can give you advice on how to set up your network, maybe where to place additional gateways, etc., uh, to make your uh, networks more resilient. Um, but also to bring down uh, the costs of, uh, of your networks. Because that's the main objective. We want to make managing fleets of devices and gateways easier and cheaper. And in fact, we don't want you to worry about this at all, which is why we have decided to come up with this uh, IoT device as a service proposition. And if you want to know more about it, um, please visit me at the booth. Um, I'll be there or one of my colleagues will be there. And um, otherwise, please send me an email. Thank you for watching. I hope you will enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.